the men. I'll get through one way or the other. <laughs> Montana, I'll bet you jerked that horse out from under me on purpose. It was the director's idea. He said the first take was okay anyway. I hate to see you go, Rex, but good luck with your new independent deal. Thanks, boy. Sorry to see you go, kid. The very best of luck. You bet, Joe. All the best. Thanks, Frank. Rex. Allie, I'm gonna miss all your little characters. <laughs> we'll see you at the party. Rex, you're leaving Globe Studios just the way you started out, with a big splash. Good luck. Thanks, boy. Say, I'd appreciate it if you didn't mention this last splash to the press. I know you publicists. Anything to get a line in the paper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a wrap. And don't forget the party. much more than you miss him. That's for sure. Producing your own pictures independently isn't all it's cracked up to be. Besides, where could he find a cameraman that would make him look as good as my Frank? That's my Frank. I honestly believe the only reason she married me was because I was able to flatter her left profile. <laughs> my profile disappeared 15 years ago, but I'm glad he doesn't notice. <laughs> I'll tell you something Rex Randall will notice, that he lost a great director. Thank you. But if you'd care to enlarge on your feelings about me, maybe we can find a private booth. Hi. <laughs> Rex is gonna buy all the boys a farewell drink at the bar. That is, if the ladies can spare them long enough. Best offer I've had all day. Cigarette? Oh, thank you, sir. You're designing cigarette machines better these days. Uh, yeah. Matter, honey. What are you thinking so hard about? It may sound nasty, but in a way, I'm glad Rex is leaving. Why? He never really liked being a Western star, and it showed. Clover, you were spoiled by knowing your father. I'm afraid they'd have a hard time trying to find a star like him today. Why, when I used to work with him, every time you'd open the door to walk on the stage, it was just like actually walking into the Old West. No, I'm afraid they don't make them like Zack Doyle anymore. And I'll tell you why not. They just don't take the trouble to build them anymore. But your father was a legend, an untouchable idol. But that's just what I mean. Showmanship. They made him a legend. And they could do the same thing today. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that is so funny. <laughs> the boys in the band. Rex says he hasn't seen cowboy outfits like that since he was a stock boy at Western Costume. It's nine o'clock, folks, which brings out our very popular singer and guitar man, old Huey Mack. <laughs> He's going to sing us a ditty called Ride Cowboy Ride. <laughs> Say, 
There's just one thing that a cowboy likes to hear. That's a saxophone and a guitar played by ear. There's nothing underneath the sun can give a cowboy so much fun. So ride, cowboy, ride. Ride, cowboy, ride. Put your baby by your side. Bring her high and wide. Hold her tight with all your might and ride, cowboy, ride. They really go for him, don't they? They go for the whole band. I'd like to take my baby by the hand While dancing to the rhythm of the band So wail and sail and blow and go While the boys and girls all do si do Ride, cowboy, ride Ride, cowboy, ride Put your baby by your side Bring her high and wide Hold her tight with all your might And ride, cowboy, ride Nice voice I think he's handsome. Looks like you two have something in common. He thinks so, too. There's just one thing that a cowboy likes to hear. That's a saxophone and a guitar played by ear. There's nothing underneath the sun can give a cowboy so much fun. So ride, cowboy, ride. Ride, cowboy, ride. Put your baby by your side. It's a wonderful party, Joe. Well, no coffee tonight? Oh, not tonight. I'll see you at lunch. Good night, Clover. Good night. talk to you if you have a few minutes. Shoot, baby. I'm with Globe Studios. Have you ever been in pictures? <laughs> <laughs> now that's a new twist. When did chicks start using that line on the fellas? I happen to be serious. Have you ever been in pictures? Let me see. 
No. But I had a date with an usherette once. If you're all through with your jokes, Mr. Mack, may we talk seriously for just a moment? Anything you say, sweetie. If you're interested, I might be able to get you a screen test. Interested? Honey child, I'm interested in anything that you suggest. My only suggestion is that you might have screen possibilities. Nothing more. Uh-huh. I like that. I work in the publicity department, not the talent department. So I'm not speaking for the studio. I'm talking to you on my own. You're so right, beautiful. There's some things you just got to do personally. You wait right there. We'll get my jacket. I know a joint that's really jumping. We'll cut out of here. Oh. Catch a check, will you? I'll square it with you later. What held you up, baby? I've been waiting for you. Must be the muscles. Did he get him squeezing a dame or squeezing a dollar? I know it's a crazy idea, Montana. But if he shows up, I think something can be done with him. I want to get him started myself. Then I'd like for you to polish him up. <laughs> I hope you'll be good enough to get by on a test. <laughs> I think Jack up in the talent department will give him some dramatic coaching in his spare time. Why doesn't the studio take care of this, Clover? <laughs> the way he is now, I couldn't ask the studio to spend a dime on him. They think I was crazy. Maybe I am. Well, you know you can help yourself to whatever you need here. Thanks, Montana. <laughs> hey! What's the matter with you, you nuts? I'll Clover! Boy! Good luck, honey. Looks like you got you a wild one. Well, good morning, Mouse. What are you made up for? I told you to wear jeans and sneakers. Baby, you're lucky I got here at all. Well, come on. Montana can lend you something. You can change in the barn. Well, how do we start, Kitchen? By getting on the horse. Oh, most horses insist you mount on the left side. Just spring lightly and you're up. You get out of here and don't come back. <laughs> like I told you, sweetie, I'm a lover, not a fighter. Mister, I've got to hand it to you. You've sure got guts. Ain't every guy who's got the moxie to run out on a possible quarter of a million dollars. What do you mean by that? That's what Rex Randall made last year in pictures. Are you kidding? It's that little girl over there will knock herself out to do something for you. The least you could do is be man enough to go along with her for a while. Did you say a quarter of a million dollars? That's what I said. You know, I think I could grow to love you. I was out of line, Miss Doyle. Now, if you want to start over, I promise you I'll behave. This isn't a fun thing, Mr. Mack. 
And unless you're capable of realizing it, there's no point in going on. People don't understand the hard work and training that goes into becoming a star. I'll work. All right, we'll try once more. Montana over there is one of the best riding doubles and stuntmen in the country. If he can't teach you, no one can. If you're willing to work hard, maybe in six weeks or so, I can get you the screen test. And if it turns out well, then your work will really begin. From now on, I'll be strictly business. All right, Mr. Mack, strictly business. Thank you. Baby, you'll never be sorry. <sighs> Excuse me. Happen, I guess. Hello, everybody. Hello, Mr. Howard. Uh, what do we have here now? The Huey Mack test. Ah, yes. Well, sit over here with me, Clover. This is your show. The Mack test again. Tony Barr's in town, and, he, and he's hired a gunslinger. Now, don't you worry about Tony Barr or his gunslinger. The gunslinger's supposed to make you mad, then draw against you. Don't you worry. I take a lot of killing. Here comes the gunslinger now. You stay right here. Your name's Slim Carter. That's what folks call me. Fellow, when the last town I was in said you're a yellow dog, that you like to hide behind women's skirts. Let's get out of all this talk and get to business. Make your play. We use that same old testing we've been using for 20 years. That's mighty fast to shooting, Slim. Thanks, Tony. You always was good with a gun. But I wonder if you could take off that belt and fight a man's fight. Always willing to oblige. What kind of a guy is he? Nowadays, we gotta be a lot more careful about the kind of people we sign for the screen. What are his vices? Drinking, gambling? Well, he likes money too much to gamble, and he's too conceited about his figure to drink. That's all right. 
A little conceit's good for an actor, and a little thrift is good for anyone. His only weakness is women. Now that's out. A Western actor can't afford a weakness. The public will forgive a dramatic actor, but a Western star belongs to the kids. The kids and the PTA. Uh, what time do I have free this afternoon? 3.15 is open. Now bring him up to my office at 3.15. I want to talk to him. Well, when? <laughs> so I figured, sir, that... Well, I'd like to play real, authentic Western roles. That's why I wanted to wear real country clothes in that test. And I'm changing my name to Slim Carter. Slim was the name of one of the real legendary heroes of the old West, you know. I think folks like to see the West as it really was. Don't you, sir? Yes, they certainly do. As I recall, that was Clover's original idea. Oh, really? She started selling me when she first came here. Okay, young fella. The studio will invest in you to the extent of one good picture, and we'll see how you make out. Thank you, sir. You'll never regret it. Well, thank Clover, you eat. <laughs> Slim. Her uh, dad may not have left her much money, but she has a fine inheritance all the same. With her upbringing, Clover's an authority on the old West. Okay, Slim. Behave yourself, watch your hat size, and you'll be happy here. Goodbye, Mr. Howard. I hope you know how grateful I am. Bye, Clover. All right, Clover. You discovered him. He's your project. I'm assigning you to him on a permanent basis. I'll make you responsible for everything. What he wears, where he eats, how he lives, the works. That's a big job, honey. Now, we'll make one picture with him right away, and you can carry out all your ideas. Then you take him around the country with See that he sells himself right. Ah, he's a smooth article, all right. The way he latched onto your ideas, your words, even. The real old West. I bet he wanted to plug his electric guitar into his saddle. How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> It may be my first picture, but it's great. Just great. Nice direction, Joe. Thanks. Clover, there's someone waiting to say goodbye in my dressing room. I'll see you at the depot. I have a feeling that after chaperoning him through 37 towns, I'll be ready for a rest cure. Well, they had him for one picture, and I'm ready now. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you going by train? Those jumps are so far apart, I should think you'd fly. But we can't. He has a phobia. He can't stand heights. Phobia my foot. The way he protected that precious carcass of his while we were shooting the picture, you'd think he was made out of gold or may. I know, but he really does have a phobia. We get him higher than a horse's head and he turns green. Well, let's not waste time talking about him. Yes, sir. All right, sir, yes, sir. Mr. Carter's reservations, please. Oh, yes. I beg your pardon, ma'am. I believe you dropped this. I'm sorry. I don't know. No, I, I did. Come on. Hiya, Mom. Hello. Oh, uh, Slim. See you later. Trying to buy a copy of my hometown paper. Come in.
you feel pretty proud of yourself, Clover. Three pictures, and he's one of our top money makers. You handle him beautifully. Thank you. But uh, don't be too happy about it yet. Slim wants to renegotiate his contract. Renegotiate? Now? Now. Well, I was going to give him a new contract, but not after three pictures. Who does he think he is, Gary Cooper? Well, Dick, he's wised up awfully fast. I think we should do it now while we can still handle him. Well, I'll talk to him about it. There's uh, one other thing. There's a ranch for sale out in Thousand Oaks. There's been so much publicity on Manitou Ranch, I think it's high time there was one. And we need a place like that for that uh, Visit Slim Carter contest we've been planning. Fine. It'll make a nice setup to entertain the press and the fans. Now, he ought to have a nice place, and he'll be able to afford one now. Slim thinks the uh, studio should buy for him. Uh, that's part of the renegotiation. Why don't we just give him the keys to the studio? And what's with you? Uh, you in love with this guy? Dick, I'm on your side. But I honestly believe this is the cheapest and easiest way to handle it. Okay, I'll go this far with him. If you can make a reasonable deal on the place, we'll give him the down payment as a bonus. Thanks, Dick. You're wonderful. Pretty nice spread, huh? Uh-huh. Oh, I see you got a high board. Do you use it much, Huey? Don't needle me, Joe. All right, that thing scares me just looking at it from down here, but you don't. Don't forget it. Charlene, look up for submarines! <laughs> returns and they're ready to sign. And I have other business to discuss. It doesn't require background music. Oh. Why don't you let Miss Killjoy wait? You promised to teach me how to blow. This is business. Oh. Hey. Where do they get off taking a bite like that? Okay. What else you want? You remember that um, visit Slim Carter contest I told you about? Yeah, that was a good idea. Why don't you do something about that? The judges have already chosen the winner. He's an orphan at a boy's home back east. An orphan? Hey, we ought to get a good write out of that in the papers. Yes, Clover sure knows her stuff. She fixed us so an orphan could win. Crazy, huh? I fixed nothing. This contest was absolutely on the level. Except that you couldn't even be bothered to know what was going on. To say nothing of reading the entries. So what do you want from me? An autographed picture for the kid? The prize was a trip to Hollywood. A month here as your guest. I'm flying east to get him. Bye. And Charlene, dear, when the boy gets here, I'm afraid we'll just have to struggle along without your popular daily visits. Is she kidding? No, dear, I'm not. Why, of all the nerve. Just who, pray tell, do you think you are? And since when do I have to answer to you? Shut up, baby. Aren't you getting into the wrong department, Clover? This has nothing to do with Charlie. The boy will be living here. He'll what? The prize was a month as a guest of Slim Carter at Manitou Ranch. That's out. Put him up in a hotel. Yeah, and make the studio pop for him. Leo stays here for one month. 
What do you do, sit up nights just thinking up things to make me miserable? You just signed your tax return. You ought to be glad I have sat up nights. And take another look at those clippings. Uh, we've had more coverage on that kid contest alone than all the other stars have had in six months. If you ask me, I think she's jealous. Huey Mack is all yours, Charlene. But you lay those claws under Slim Carter and you'll have me to deal with. Claws? Listen, you. I've had just about all of you I can stand. I'm beginning to forget I'm a lady. <laughs> Uh, don't start something you can't finish, Charlene. She's rough. Get her out of here so I can finish my business, will you? I don't think the lady wants you around, Mouse. Run along, doll. Practice floating. I think you better hear what the boy wrote. I like Slim Carter's pictures because they show you what the West was like in the olden days. And when you look at Slim Carter playing his guitar and singing and riding his faithful horse, Cherokee, you feel like you know all the brave men who brought law and order to the big new country. Signed, your fan, Leo Gallagher. Is that his name? Leo Gallagher? That's right. I got a terrific idea. Clover, hang on to your hat. This is really going to send you. I'll announce that I'm going to adopt Leo Gallagher. Why, you've never even seen this boy. And in any case, you're single. How oh, dumb can you get? I'm not going to go through with it. As soon as the story hits the wire, then you announce that the home next it because I'm single. Great, huh? Yes, honey? Is dog gone, cussing? Oh, I wouldn't think so. Some of the fellows say it is. They say it's just something you can say out loud. But underneath you mean something a lot stronger. Well, Slim uses it in the book, doesn't he? A couple of times. Well, I'm positive he doesn't mean anything stronger. That would be cheating. And he does not cheat. I could fix it, maybe. I'll sew it for you. You will? I'm glad. Because I never was much good at sewing. Our house mother has 73 kids to look after. And if we make a lot of extra work for her, we sure catch the dickens. Guess by the time I get back, that'll be Harry's. Harry's? Harry Phillips. You see, with suits, we only wear them on Sundays. And drawing like we do, they're still good after they get too small. So we pass them down. I got that one from Speck Gorman. Harry Phillips has dibs on it after me. Miss Doyle, do you know what this is? Chief. There. Can you read a whole sentence? I'll try. May the great spirit make sunrise in your heart. You're doing great. <laughs> Did Slim teach you? Well, he's, uh, he's taught me a lot. Attention, flight 135 from Chicago, now unloading. There you are, little lady. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Bye, bye, Slim. No more now, friends. I have to meet my little party. Aww. Yes, come on, fellas. Hiya, Slim. Leo. Should I call him Mr. Carter? No, no, Slim is fine. Hi, Slim. I'm Leo Gallagher. Howdy, partner. Mighty proud to meet you. Thanks, Slim. Here, let me grow you up a little bit. We can talk man to man. Let's get another Slim. You're recovering a kid. Run back away, son, and come galloping up to him. That's far enough, son. Now come running in like you just saw Santa Claus. Slim, repeat the business where you picked him up. It looks good. We'll do it, Red. Okay, kid. Howdy, partner. Mighty proud to meet you. Hello. Let me grow you up a little bit. We can talk man to man. 
That's enough, huh, fellas? Yeah, fine. Come on, we're going home. Come on. I gotta go to Western Union. Miss Bradley told me to send her a telegram the minute I got here. Who's Miss Bradley? The superintendent of the home. Well, you can phone us from the ranch. We'll drop you at your place on the way out. Oh, Slim, I'm going to stay with Leo in the guest house for the month. Oh, I see. That's fine. Man, what a house! Boy, look at that war bonnet. A real one. Ogallala Sioux. Ogallala Sioux? How did you know that? Oh, I take mostly books about the West out of the library. <laughs> Here, I'll take it down. Those are real eagle feathers. Red cloud wool on like that. And crazy horse. Okay, if I touch it? Well, let's try it on. See how Chief Big Bear looks in it. Want to see yourself? Sure. Oh. <laughs> there, how's that? Fine. Hi, Slim Davy. Hi. Oh, pardon me. Hello, Clover. Oh, hello, Charlene. This is Leo Gallagher. Miss Carol, Leo. Hi. I'm pleased to meet you, Miss Carol. I see that you've forgotten we told you about Leo's visit. He's to be here for a month, you know. Yes, I knew you'd put the Indian sign on me. Dear, I just didn't know it had started so soon. <laughs> well, Miss Carol. Why, the dirty little brat. Leo, we... Uh, what I do? Slim, Leo learned the Indian sign language from that book you wrote. Huh? I was trying to give Miss Carol the Indian blessing. May the great spirit make sunshine in your heart. But I guess I didn't do it right. Oh, didn't do it right? Why, pardon you did it so good you scared the lady. War bonnet on, you look like a real redskin. Gee, I'm sorry, Slim. Ah, oh, forget it. Slim, uh, why don't you take Leo out and introduce him to Cherokee? I'd bet he'd like that. Boy, would I! And Charlie and I can have a little chat while you're gone. Okay, off with the bonnet. I'm sorry I scared you, Miss Carol. You've got it all figured out, haven't you, dear? You've got your cat set for Slim, and you'll do anything in your power to get him. Charlene, conversation with you bores me, so let's make it as brief as possible. You're absolutely right. This conversation is past conversation. As your father would have said in one of his corny movies, the time has come for a showdown. You want to physically fight me? I've been drooling over the idea for months. Slim says you're tough. What he doesn't know is that I came from a family of six kids and I had to be tough. Charlene, I really feel very sorry for you. But right now, I just don't have any time to waste on sympathy. Give us one of your witty little quips now, dear. Let's see how they help you out of a real spot. Like this, alfalfa or barley? Both. He gets on kicks. What kind of a bit do you use on him? Hmm? A bit. Oh. Well, this one. Grazing bit. How many gates does he have? Don't you ask anything but questions. <laughs> That's a good one. Where are you getting all these questions? You got them written down there? Yeah. I only have about 50 on Cherokee. But boy, do I have a lot on you. Every kid in the home gave me questions to ask you. Oh. Like what? Well, Larry Toller wants to know why you never kiss girls in your pictures. But he's an old kid. He's dopey. What else? Who's that Miss Carol? Don't you think we'd better answer the questions in the book first? Okay. <laughs> Rudy Schneider wants to know if you wear underwear. <laughs> <laughs> How many questions you got in the book? Oh, I have five books. I guess I'm going to get all the questions answered. I'll have to stick to you like glue. Slim.
I'm sorry, Slim. What'd I do? Kicked off a burglar alarm. You can't open doors around here at night. They're all wired. I saw a light, and I knew you were awake. I wanted to see you. If you wanted to see me, what are you doing here in the barn? I thought I'd come talk to Cherokee first. What do you want to talk to Cherokee about? What is it? I, I just wanted to talk to Slim. This belongs to you. Miss Bradley gave it to me to pay for the telegram. But I didn't. I sent it on your phone. To wake up everybody in the whole house in the middle of the night just to pay me a half a buck? But that isn't all. I was going to keep it. I thought you'd forget. I know it was wrong. This washes us up. I wouldn't blame you. It's okay, Leo. You gave it to me. You didn't keep it. You know, if they put us all in jail for the things we just thought about doing, the jails would be crammed all the time. Better get back to bed. See you in the morning. Gosh, Slim sure knows the score. Did you ever know anybody like him? Never. Slim. Hi, Slim. I have to run the studio. The old man called wants to see me. May Leo go? Okay, come on, kid. Mr. Howard is expecting you, Mr. Carter. He said for you to make yourself at home in his office. He'll be right back. Pretty nice, huh? Mm -hmm. Here. Read this. It's a script of the new picture we're starting this week. Operator, give me an outside line. Mr. Carter. Slim. Thank you, baby. Hi, Ma. Hi, Slim. You want to do the Macombo bit tonight? Are you kidding? I'm not leaving this apartment or seeing anybody for a week. Got a sty. Well, we don't have to go out. I'll come over there. Don't you dare. I'm sick. Well, okay. But you better get rid of that sty so you can go to that premiere Friday night. Oh, I've seen you before, Nan. I'll come out to the set and visit you. Fine. Certainly. Make it easy on yourself. Bye, honey. Hi, boss. Do you want to see me? I sit still. Did you make up your mind about that new girl for the next picture? Yeah, it should be all right. They don't make much difference in a Slim Carter picture one way or another. Oh, by the way, I didn't call you all the way in for that. Will you pass by the legal department before you leave the lot? They have some important papers for you to sign. Well, whom do we have here? I'm Neil Gallagher, sir. Oh, a young contest winner. Well, if you're going to be here during the filming of Slim's picture, I think we ought to find some sort of job for you, don't you? Yes, sir. I guess so. Well, let's see now. Uh, I'll tell you what, son. The studio will pay you $10 a week to take care of the phones on the set. How's that? Who usually does that, sir? Oh, along with many, many other duties, the company utility man's ordinarily assigned to that job. Uh, how much does he make? Well, son... He belongs to a union, and their minimum is $91 a week. Well, sir, I think if I'm going to do the job, I should receive the regular wages. Mm -hmm, you've got a point there. But with Slim here, the star of our film, I, we have an awful high budget. How about our making you the, uh, the utility man's assistant for the $10 a week? Uh, just answer the phones. That's a deal, sir. Come on, kid. You know, back east, I'll bet you got a reputation for being a tight man with a dollar. 
Well, I never bid around many dollars, but the kids all say I have a mean grab on a dime. <laughs> You're gonna do all right. Come on. All right, go. Speed. Action. your song so sad why do you roam so far from home where's the gal you're missing so bad cowboy cowboy why do you feel Print. Okay, that's all. Good night. Wrap it up. Leo, how was it for you? Perfect. What's Frank say every time it takes perfect? I'm doing it. boy. Leo, Frank and Ali Hanneman are celebrating their wedding anniversary today. Now, the whole gang's over there. We've got a little present for them, and we'd like you to give it to them. Let me go tell Slim. Okay. Do me a big favor, will you, Slim? What's that, kid? When you come over to the party for Mr. and Mrs. Hanneman, Joe asked me to give them the gift from everybody. But I know it'd be the happiest day of their whole lives if you give it to them instead and make a speech, sort of. I don't think it'd be that important to them. Gosh, Slim, are you kidding? Slim Carter making a speech just for them? Boy, they'd love it. You really think so, huh? A long time ago, when... I wasn't too much older than old Leo. I was madly in love with a movie star. Suddenly, her movie stopped coming to our town, and I found out that she'd married some fool cameraman and retired. Well, me and a lot of others, we carried the torch for a long time. But I was luckier than the others because I've had a chance to meet this beautiful star since. Looks like marrying that cameraman was the right thing to do because they're still in love after 20 years, and she's just as beautiful today as the first time I saw her on the screen. So Frank, Allie, speaking for all of us, we all hope to be around on your silver anniversary. You do the talk, and you're the actress. Is it all right? Yeah, it was just fun. You really meant it. Thank you all so much. The gifts are just lovely. And thank you, Slim, for the nice speech. But I'll bet you were much older than old Leo when my films came to your town. <laughs> Boy, 
wardrobe department left word, Miss Doyle, they'd like to have Leo up for a fitting as soon as you come in. Oh, thanks, Benny. Could you see if they're ready for him now? Sure thing, Miss Doyle. What do you want to be for? Oh, I suppose I want a final fitting on that cowboy outfit Slim's having made up for you. And uh, I have a surprise for you. Oh, boy, what is it? I guess I can't keep the secret any longer. They're dressing you exactly like Slim tonight, and you're going to a world premiere with him. Wow. And there'll be coast-to-coast -coast television coverage. I've wired Mrs. Bradley, so all the boys will be watching. They'll be ready for him in one hour, Miss Doyle. Oh, thanks, Benny. I never saw anybody rope like that before, except when Slim did it in Rawhide Trail. Yes, sir. He's the best. You know, I've been in this business for 15 years. Plenty of times I wonder why I stick. The dough you make, you can't keep. You gotta get up too early. But most of the people you meet are so darn nice. Well, he's certainly been wonderful to Leo. This whole crew knows Huey Mack for what he is. A crude, conceited tightwad. But not one of them lets on to Leo that they don't look up to him just the way he does. Watch this one, Leo. Nice going, Montana. Will you do some slip? Spin the butterfly? Well, partner. Okay, I... boys. Let's get back on the set. Be right in, Joe. Make it snappy. You got that big dramatic scene coming up. In a minute. Montana. Thanks, Montana, for not saying anything before. You know, that kind of spot club looks up again, and I can't afford to be embarrassed in front of people. In your spare time. Teach me some of those rope tricks. Make it worth your while. Sure, Slim. He's a real good little kid, isn't he? Ready, Slim? Quiet! Not as quiet now. This is a picture. I'd like it exceptionally quiet. Please, folks, this is a tough scene. Very quiet. Please. Ready? Go, puppy. Ready? Roll! Fade! They're running. They're getting on their horses. They're riding away. Okay, Q. Well, looks like we've got them on the run, buddy. Take good care of it. I'm sure gonna miss you, buddy. very often. You know that. You just did a great scene. Yes, sir. When it comes to dishing up the corn, my Slim just tops them off. Hi, sweetie. Jack. All right, let's have the camera right back over here now. I just thought I'd drop by and give you a preview of the dress I'm wearing to the premiere tonight. If I want my Slim to be proud, I'll need all those big shots there. Charlene. Well, I want to talk to you about the premiere. What's there to talk about? Are you trying to ditch me again? I spent $90 for this dress. I had my hair styled and I rented a mink stove. 
I was counting on tonight. Tonight is my night to be seen by people that can make me a star. Who are you taking? Clover Doyle? They want me to take the kid. It's business. Business? You're on top. You don't need to run around with that kid for publicity. Shut up. Snip. Snip. I want to talk to you. Later, kid. Right now, please. Okay. Grow me a little, will you? Now, what's bothering you? Are you taking me to the premiere just because of business? Where did you ever get an idea like that? I heard you talking to Miss Carroll. Partner, when you're dealing with a skittish filly... I'm not a skittish filly, so you can tell me the truth. You didn't have to do all those things you've done for me already. So take her to the premiere. I don't think I'd like it anyway. What do I call you? Your partner. You bet. And partners have to trust each other, don't they? Will you trust me? Sure. I'm sorry, Sue. You better go wash your face. Thank you, Janet and Tony. Hope you enjoy the picture. Folks, every star in town has turned out for this gala premiere. Wow, listen to those fans in the bleachers. I can't see yet who they're cheering for. Oh, it's Globe Studios' great Western star, Slim Carter. He's with his much-publicized guest from the East, little Leo Gallagher. Hey, Slim. Slim, could you step up here a moment? Welcome, Slim. Glad to see you. Thank you, Jim. Would you like to introduce your little pal to our audience? <laughs> Let me grow you up a little bit here so all your buddies back east are good looking. You want to wave to him? I enjoyed the premiere, Joe. It was a wonderful evening. Yeah, I, I hope I don't ruin it for you now. Ruin it for me? I have a question. A matter of fact, a couple of questions. We lose Leo in a few days. Yes, I know. I'm afraid we're all going to miss him. Well, I know how you feel about him. Why don't we get married and adopt him? Why, Joe... Let me finish. Please. Yeah. I know, okay. I have to be honest with you. I know you'd make a wonderful husband. And a wonderful father for Leo. But... But I... I just don't love you the way a woman should. As a wife, I mean. I don't know why I keep knocking myself out. I can't lick a shadow. I don't even know whose shadow it is. Is it your father's? Or are you caught like Leo by the legend of Slim Carter? Good night, Joe. Clover's birthday. I already bought my gift, but I know how busy you are, so I thought I'd remind you. Thanks, Martin. I'm glad you did. Hello, Marvin. I've put up a little snack, Miss Doyle. Oh, fine. Mr. Carter and Leo should be here any minute. Good. Oh, hi. Marvin has fixed us a little something to eat. Oh, boy. Hold it, partner. We better get out of these jackets so we don't get them messed up, huh? Boy, that sure was fun, Slim. You like that, huh? I could do it every night. Well, this looks like a deli of a snack. Leo, 
Bill, you were the big hit of the premiere on TV tonight. Right, Slim? Right. How'd I look? Now, listen to a little ham, would you? You look very handsome. Oh, boy, I'm starved. Here's a letter that came for you today, Leo. You were just great on TV tonight. Thanks, Marvin. I guess it's from Mrs. Bradley back at the home. I wonder if any of them saw him on TV tonight. She probably let some of the bigger boys stay up to watch. Something wrong, partner? One of my babies got adopted. One of your babies? Well, that's what they call them. Of course, they're not really babies. They're the Wonder Force. But each of us older kids takes care of five little ones. I see. If you're going to get adopted, that's where it happens mostly, when you're one to four. Some of the kids, well, it's not their fault, but you just know nobody picked them out. And others are too old to get adopted when they lose their folks and come to the home. I was six. That's too old. Miss Bradley told me not to count on getting adopted. I didn't either. Except the first two years. But I knew somebody would take Patrick John. Miss Bradley says he's going to a lovely home. I bet he missed me, though, right at the start. I'll sure miss him. But I'm glad he's going to have folks of his own. He was the best little kid I ever knew in my whole life. Look, Leo, you're going to miss Patrick John for a spell, sure. But you got to expect it, because he was your buddy. You got to figure on taking a punch every so often. Sure. You got to save up the good times to make up for the bad. You mean when things go wrong, you think of something good that's happened to you? Sure. Now you got the picture. That way you can roll with the punches. Take all the good times that you've had here. The premiere tonight. Now, they ought to add up to the plus side, huh? Gee, Slim, you sure can't figure things out. If I didn't know how many friends you had, I'd think you knew how it feels to be lonesome. If it's all right, I'm not hungry anymore. May I please go to bed? Of course, darling. Good night's rest and you'll feel better. Good night. Good night, buddy. Shut up until we go to bed. I'll look in on you before you go to sleep. I'm not hungry anymore either. He hasn't many more days here. I'll be glad to see him leave. I thought you were growing fond of him. I am. But the longer he stays, the fonder I'll grow and the harder it'll be to send him back. Knowing there's nothing I can do about it. Clover, I want to say something. You know, I don't always say things right, but... Go ahead. May not like it. Try. Well, it's you. I'm the kind of a man that can't stand to live as close as we have without feeling it. And you don't feel anything. Well, I've got you all figured out. You think that no man alive can measure up to your father. And maybe you're right. But I think you're forgetting something. He was a man, too. He fell in love one day and got married. And he raised a little girl. This little girl grew up to be a machine. Machine? Yes. A machine. It's a darn waste. Eyes like yours that the average woman would give anything to have. Your hair. And the graceful woman way that you walk. 
it's all wasted. Now I'm getting corny. I guess I better go to bed. Wait, Slim. I want to thank you. You said some very nice things to me. A woman always likes to hear nice things. And I am a woman. Much more so than you realize. And if it makes you feel any better to know, it's very difficult for me, too, living so close together. Slim, we'd better go in. It's getting very late. We have an early call. Yeah, I guess you're right. Have Marvin get me up at 5 in the morning, will you? Yeah, sure. Hey, Montana, what's this? Hey, that was a perfect trooper mount. Who taught you that? Liam. Hey, have you all been riding over at the ranch together? Yeah, we ride most every night. Hi, Leo. Hey, Montana, we need you over at the waterfall right away. Joe's gonna shoot that shot before we move inside. Big day, huh? You mean they're gonna do that scene where Slim jumps from the top of the waterfall? That's right. Boy, that's an awfully high jump, even for Slim. <laughs> oh, don't you worry about him. My wardrobe shirt down there, coffee? All set, Montana. Montana. Hi. Thank you. Clover, the kid thinks Slim's going to do this jump himself. I know. I'm going to try to keep him back far enough so he can't recognize you. If he does, we'll, we'll just have to tell him about stars not doing their own stunts. I hope we don't. Excuse me, I got to see Joe. Good luck. Man, that must be a hundred feet high. I don't think it's that high. Well, maybe not. But I'll bet there's no one but you with enough nerve to jump off it. Yeah. Leo. You better go with Clover till we finish this. Okay, Slim. Good luck. Thanks. Now, we've got the shot covered pretty well with the three cameras. Montana, I'll cue you first. Crawl along this ledge, over that little hump of rock toward the falls. When you get to the end there, stop and stand still. Nick, then I'll cue you boys in. You follow along the ledge after Montana. Now, Montana, I'm not going to cue the leap. You use your own judgment. It's your life. Just don't let the Indians get within grabbing distance of you before you jump. Gotcha. Good luck. Say, this is one stunt I'm glad you're doing instead of me. All right, boys, places. Folks, I'd like it exceptionally quiet during this shot, please, even if there is no sound. I've got to get it in one take. Now, it's a difficult shot and a tough stunt, and I don't want anyone getting hurt. And will everybody not directly connected with the shooting please stay back? Does he mean us? He means us. Okie dokie. Ready, Joe? Yeah. Roll them. Speed. Action. Where did you get those? The prop man loaned them to me. He said it was all right. Boy, Slim looks kind of scared up there, doesn't he? What? It is Slim. Indians! Print. Anything wrong? Yeah, I lost something.
What happened? I don't know. I lost my lucky half buck, Leo. Was it okay? Boy, that was a dilly. I want to see you alone for a minute. Okay, Dad. Figured you would. Say whatever you want to. I did wrong. I know I got it coming. Doggone right you did wrong. I don't have to tell you how many people would be out of a job tomorrow if anything had happened to you. I ought to eat you out good. But I'm not going to. Because I know why you did it, Slim. Thanks for the Slim, Joe. You deserve it. You and Mac would never have done that. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Happy birthday, Clover. How did you know it was my birthday? Joe told me the other day on the set. Well, it looks like today's a big day. My birthday and your farewell party tonight. Aren't you going to open your presents? Oh, sure. I shop for it myself. Oh, it's beautiful, Leo. Just what I needed. Open slips present. Oh, my, it's lovely. Do you know what it is, Clover? It's an Indian marriage necklace. It's just beautiful. Well, aren't you going to put it on? Well, Leo, for a girl to wear this particular kind of necklace... No, I, I'd better not. I don't think Slim's aware of its significance. Oh, yes, he is. Slim wants you to marry him. Oh, no, Leo. We're friends, good friends, but only that. You misunderstood. Slim overheard me admiring a necklace like this on the set one day. That's not it at all. Buying that necklace was Slim's way of asking you to get married. He's too shy to ask you himself. <laughs> Slim? Shy? Oh, yes. When you really get to know Slim, you can tell he's bashful. I'll better watch to see if you're wearing that on the set today. Eat your cereal while it's hot, Leo. It's cold cereal. I'll eat while it's cold, then. And I'll drink my coffee. Then you'll put the necklace on. Slim. <laughs> Gorgeous. And here I was sore at you. I thought you were trying to brush me off and all the Charlene. Time... It's a goodbye present. Goodbye? Yeah. We don't dig the same things anymore. I don't like hanging around the night spots anymore. I don't play jivey guitar with the combo and... I, I guess I've changed. It isn't your fault. It's that I've changed. Slim, I knew I'd lost you a long time ago. Now you're just figuring it out. I guess Clover fits into your new plans. Do me a favor. Don't say anything nasty about her. Okay. So we're lost. I got my new man all picked out anyway. I figured it wouldn't take you long. Where's Slim? In his dressing room with a babe. Where else? The fellow might try to change, you know, if people would give him a break. Thanks, honey. It's the nicest gift I've ever had. Bye, kid. Bye-bye. All right, folks, that's a wrap here. Bye, Clyde. Let's rehearse it again. I don't know, ma'am. I... What is it? I don't know, ma'am. That's what they told me to say. I don't know, ma'am. That's what they told they me to say. They said there goes Clover. <clears throat> he 
it. What's this? Leo said you were wearing it when you left this morning. Oh, uh, I just wore that to please Leo. I'm sorry I did. It might have given him the wrong idea. Our relationship has always been on a strictly business basis. And that's what it'll continue to be. You understand? Okay, Clover. Clover? Why does Slim have the necklace? I gave it back to him. But, Leo. Slim Carter isn't just an everyday person. He, he's a symbol. It's what you wrote in the contest. He stands for all the great men who made the West. But plenty of them got married. Well, his, his fans don't want him to get married. They feel he belongs to them. So, so Slim and I'll just go along the way we always have. It's better that way, Leo, honestly. But I'm one of his fans and I want him to marry you. Nobody would care if he married you. They all like it. They'd all like you. Oh. Boy, won't he be the big hero around the orphanage now? Oh, yes. He'll have everybody well, talking yes. cowboy and Indian. Uh, well, I never had my own cake before. <laughs> well, right to it from time to time, won't you? I sure will, Montana. Leo, the studio is sending you your chair, the one with your name on it. How's that? Gee, everybody's being so nice. I hope it doesn't all go to waste. You better cut the cake, Leo. Our plane leaves at 11. All right. Mr. Carter? Yes, Marvin. Your long-distance call is through, sir. Thank you, Marvin. Excuse me. with Leo. Something between him and Slim. Like what? Mm, I don't know. They've been playing little games ever since we sat down. Oh, no, he couldn't. What? Before Leo ever came out here, Slim suggested I release a story that he was going to adopt the boy. And then when he'd milked it for all the publicity he could get, he'd announced that he'd been turned down because he was single. I really thought he'd changed. What's a big secret, Leo? Well, I'm not supposed to say anything yet, but I guess telling you is okay. And anyhow, everybody will know in a few minutes. Know what? Swoop's going to adopt me. He doesn't care about me being too old or anything, he says. Leo. Slim is single. They don't let single men adopt children. Maybe he didn't know that. I'm sorry you got your hopes up. I'm afraid you're going to have to go back. I know, but not tonight. Slim is going with me. It takes a little while to sign the papers and everything. Leo, Slim can't adopt you. There's a rule against it, a hard and fast rule. But he asked them to make an exception. They will, I know they will. Leo, honey, there's some things that even Slim can't do. And I'm afraid this is one of them. But look at what he's done already. Born like he was back in that coal town. With his father running away before Slim was born even. And leaving his mother. Slim was sent to reform school when he was only my age. Because he stole something. Where did you ever hear things like that about Slim? He told me. He told you? When? The day he bought the marriage necklace. That's when he said he wanted me to be his little boy. And he hoped you'd marry him and be my mother. Only you'd most likely say no, because of a lot of things he'd said and done. He just didn't know any better. He'd never been around anybody like you, he said. They can't turn me down. Get back to them, Mrs. Bradley, please. Try just once more. I can't tell Leo the answer is no. It's no use, Mr. Carter. Our rules are made for the children's good. We can't make any exceptions. Let me have it straight. Did what I've done in the past, my juvenile record and all, is that why? I'm no Rose, I admit that, but I love Leo. The board was very impressed by your honesty, Mr. Carter. It isn't a question of your character. 
But what if you got married? And the girl of your choice didn't like the idea of raising someone else's child. I'll never send him back. And I'll get married. But never to anyone who doesn't love Leo. Hello, Mrs. Bradley. This is Clover Doyle. Mr. Carter is getting married. Much sooner than he thinks. Just as soon as it occurs to him to propose. Miss Bradley, my dad isn't going to be single much longer. He's going to marry my mother. <sighs> Miss Bradley, I sure adopted a dilly of a family. 